Hi, good morning, everyone, um, and welcome to our presentation. I'm Ariadna, this is my colleague Kim. We both work at FTI, and we launched um, a survey to 104 institutional investors across the UK and the US, trying to gauge their interest levels in uh, the psychedelic sector. Um, we asked 104 in institutional investors, and cumulatively, their funds uh, manage about 10 or more than $10 trillion uh, in assets. A quick introduction on FTI. We are a consulting firm that supports clients in moments of truth, transformation, and crises. And Kim and I work in the strategic comms sector. Uh, however, there's a few other segments, including technology, in corporate finance, economic consulting, and litigation. Basically, whatever transition you're going through, we can help. In Stratcoms, we support our clients, which include investors, uh, companies, including uh, private as well as public, and trade associations with all sorts of communication needs, internal comms, public relations, public affairs, uh, IPOs, trade sales, M&A, uh, digital, and this survey is thanks to Kim's team, which is uh, the research team. Um, I think we can all agree that the psychedelic sector is having a moment of truth right now, so it's great to be here and to share these findings with you. I think they'll, you'll find them very interesting, and there's some important uh, takeaways that uh, are, are tangible, and I think they'll be helpful to everyone in the room. Uh, so this survey comprises uh, answers from 104 uh, institutional investors, uh, on average, their funds manage uh, 217 billion in, in assets. You can see the investor types on the right-hand side. And it's about equal between US and the UK. Uh, so the fun stuff. Um, across the board, there is interest in the psychedelic sector. About 60% of uh, the institutional investors in the US are interested, with the other 40% slightly interested, no one said that they were not interested. In the UK, we're a little bit less enthusiastic with about 35% very interested, um, but 6% saying not interested at all. We think this lines up with the knowledge level in the US, 98% um, of the uh, respondents said that they were knowledgeable about the sector, whereas in the UK, it was only 80%, with 2% uh, saying that they were not aware at all. Um, so there's interest. Why aren't they buying? <laughs> uh, this is a fascinating chart uh, which, which tells a lot. So in the US, there's three barriers that are all tied at 28%. Uh, That's poor company management, uh, negative media coverage, and the, uh, an investment horizon that is just too long for them. In the UK, we've got two that are tied at 33%. And that's liquidity and education of the general pu population. Um, the biggest difference we saw between the US and the UK is poor company management. This might be because in the US, there's more publicly listed psychedelic companies, also uh, more high profile companies that have met their device in the public domain. Um, one thing that is similar between the two geographies is uh, this, this education aspect. So in the US, an issue is negative media coverage, which when I look at the media coverage, it's all quite positive. However, there's some kind of flippant articles every once in a while. Um, and in, in the UK, we've got this issue about education of general uh, population. And so one key takeaway here is that we need to engage with the public, not just through the media, although the media is an excellent tool, but there are other tools that, that can be used. Um, so moving on, so hopefully this doesn't sound too dismal, but it's not. Uh, when we looked or we, when we asked the people to look into the future, 70% um, of the investors in the US said that they were slightly likely, with 23% saying that they were very likely. Uh, and it's a very similar uh, population in the UK, saying 25% saying that's a um, very likely, and no one said that they're not likely at all. So now our job, and your job, is to get those people, the 65% that are on the fence and slightly likely, over, over the fence into the very likely. And my colleague Kim is going to tell you exactly how to do that. 
Thanks, Ariadna. So we just spoke about barriers and that there's a potential for investment in this space. But precisely, how do we convert these people and these investors to get into the psychedelic sector. So precisely looking at what is kind of the green light for investors, we looked at what would encourage them to invest in the space as well. Amongst the top three on average, we're all about growth. So market growth, the potential for higher return and increased demand. Of course, we have to contextualize this in the psychedelic sector that is correlated as well with the development of clinical trials and medical trials regulatory approval and general scaling of a company. But I think key here as well to point out are the country differences and that we see in the UK a uh, kind of driver of investment would be M&A by large pharma companies. And this can be um, kind of attributed to the fact that in the UK, investors tend to be a little bit more risk averse and they're looking for something that is a little bit more established. But don't give up hope because a part of that is as well because there's a level of knowledge and a kind of level of awareness that's slightly lower than in the US. So again, we build in this knowledge piece. Whereas in the US, we actually see one of the key drivers, so four in 10 investors say, is the potential for societal impact. And this can be attributed as well to the fact that in the US, there are higher levels of education and we do have the history of context of alternative medicines and the potential that this could be a sector which is a game changer for things like mental health and PTSD and many other health conditions. So moving on rather into what are the next steps for your industry? What are the next steps for the industry? So we found that half of the investors in the US, as we mentioned, would actually want to build knowledge. So we're one step further in the US about educating the public, building that knowledge so that the US and investors in the US are also aware. Whereas interesting, you'll see a little bit of an outlier here in the UK is celebrity endorsement. Um, yeah, it's a funny, funny piece, but I think it's important to note here a big part of that is just building awareness. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a celebrity, but it can be somebody that is um, known enough or a good spokesperson that can kind of raise the profile of the sector in the UK. I think it's also important to note here that medical evidence and trials is relatively lower on the list currently, but that still four in 10 think this is a priority for the industry now. And also important to note that our sample did include a wide array of investors. And if we would have just surveyed um, pharma or life science specific investors, that percentage will most likely be higher. Now to telling your story, actually. So an important part about telling your story is not just on what to say, but also who to communicate to. And from an investor perspective, we find here that the USA and the UK are aligned in that a focus should definitely be on speaking to the general public because those at the end of the day are also the voters. But additionally, I do want to point out that high or chief amongst uh, kind of priority is as well speaking to governments. And in the UK, this would actually mean a more direct approach of actually directly speaking to government and policymakers, whereas in the US, a recommended approach is actually speaking to public policy, kind of like political pressure groups. I think as a kind of ultimately to tie this together, it's extremely important to target your communication. And it's also important as a company that you focus on things such as media relations, corporate PR, public affairs work, and work with trade associations together, hand in hand. Back over to you, Mariana. Um, so yeah, that's, that's really it for us. We hope this was helpful. Um, from our perspective, it shows that there's real interest in the, in the sector and the, the asks um, being made by, by these institutional investors, they're quite reasonable um, and they're, they're within reach. Um, some considerations can be done within the, a company, so individually, such as professionalism or good company management, but others will require working together uh, for government relations, um, 
big pharma M&A and making the, the sector more liquid as a whole. Sometimes collaboration can be difficult, especially when we all have such great ideas and we think we know best, but this event is testament that we can come together and work together to create the future that we want. Um, we have some hard copies of this presentation. Uh, it's worth mentioning that the, we did ask 20 questions to the, um, to the institutional investors, but we've only covered six due to time. Uh, those 20 questions are in the hard copies. Um, we can also email you a soft copy if you like. You're welcome to share this um, or cite the content, but please um, use us as a source. And if you want to chat about communications in general or about the findings, um, we'll be here all day. Thanks so much.